the field of Pickett's Charge here, and it's the point of woods, the step-off point right over there with the statue of General Robert E. Lee. And out of those woods all along here came between 10 and 15,000 soldiers on the afternoon of July 3rd with the flags waving that the men who, were, who they were attacking looked in awe as they saw them emerging from the woods. And the attack was made about 3 o'clock in the afternoon following a two-hour artillery barrage, in which case 280 cannons were firing all at once. Now, close to 15,000 men left those woods and by the time they got about midway through this field, they began to get hit by uh, the cannons that were up here by the copse of trees. If we look up here on the Union side, we can see the famous copse of trees right here behind me. And this is the Emmitsburg Road right along here. And by the time the troops all funneled in, they, were, they funneled all towards the copse of trees, passing the Kodori farmhouse over here. General Pickett and his staff were just on the other side of that rise there on taking shelter in the uh, farm near the farmyard. And all the Confederate soldiers all streamed across this field and they began to fall. And 15,000 of them started over here and 150 of them made it over that wall in one charge. But once they were climbing the fence, along the Emmitsburg Road, they began to take fire from the muskets all along the ridge there. But the Confederates had a little bit of advantage because the soldiers that were firing on them, they could see their silhouettes really good along the ridge. So, you know, a silhouette is a lot easier to fire at. But this was the high water mark of the uh, Confederacy. They were beaten back off of the ridge with two-thirds casualties. General Pickett's entire division was destroyed. tree line is filled with cannons just like it was during the cannonade. There's a cannon every 10 yards for the entire field. The final charge was from the road to the copse of, of trees. This was a slaughter ground towards the stone wall. The rebel forces reached the Emmitsburg Road here. This entire front here opened up. Opened up at it with a fearful peppering of triple canister, triple canisters coming from the infantry was all along here. So came, the object was to leave the top of the At this point, people were falling so fast. Mayhem was really bad. Frank Haskell said that one of the sounds that really got him o over the sounds of the muskets and the sounds of the uh, cannon shot that was coming in all along here, like triple canister and musketry, was the, set, the sound of 30,000 men growling. He said you could really hear the growling of everyone who was participating, let alone the intense fire. At this point, funneled, funneled in was mostly 
people from Virginia. Where the Virginians went up the hill. Still aiming at the tops of trees. Men are falling to the left, falling to the right. Smoke, screaming. Thousands of muskets, triple canister. Lewis Armistead, right about at this point, took his hat off and put it on the top of his sword and held it high so that he could guide the troops above all the smoke and noise. The Confederates reached the uh, stone wall up here, took cover behind the stone wall and started to fire at the troops, the Federals on the other side. For a short period of time, the Federals fell back, and that's when Lieutenant Haskell, who was up on the ridge, rallied them to push them on out of here. So like, for instance, over there, men from three counties of North Carolina went right up along that fence line, and when it got about 20 yards from the fence, they were hit with triple loads of canister from three different cannons. And it more or less wiped out the men from three counties in North Carolina. Some of the units converged right towards the top of the trees, and one of the first actions that happened at contact was hand-to-hand -hand fighting that went on around the cops of trees because nobody they never really fell back they were obstinate there this was hand-to-hand -hand fighting over the wall this is where the whole fight of the whole battlefield comes together line all the way from the round tops over there over to Cemetery Hill. This is the frontal center attack that Lee planned to break the lines in two. When the soldiers came out from the woods there, this we we're almost at the point that the Federals watched them come out. They had all their flags flying. It was like perfect parade order. For a bunch of barefoot guys dressed in rags carrying 80 rounds of ammunition, they looked, they said they looked supremely sublime as they came out. And they had, a lot of the federal troops that were crouched down behind the walls here were just struck in awe and silence at the spectacle. Then they got back to work and they began to fire. There was 26 cannon up here in, on uh, Cemetery Hill, near where the cyclorama is now. And there was many units of artillery all along here. And as they converged in here, troops from that side swung out, and troops, Vermont troops from that side swung out and hit the main column in the flank, and that really started to tear them up too. go up here by the copse of trees itself. These stones were piled here by the Union troops 140 years ago. I mean they didn't they didn't bring in stones from somewhere else. These were the actual rocks and stones that were here. This is where the hand-to-hand -hand fight went on, all along this stone wall. This is the stone wall at Pickett's Charge, Gettysburg. Mm -hmm. 